Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Bird Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we will be checking out my Raspberry Pi desktop setup. So let's get started. Before we begin, I do want to give a huge shout out to 52Pi, the one that actually sent me the Desk Pi Pro. If you haven't seen that already, I'll leave a link on the top left and down in the description below. As well as Luke, uh, Raspberry Pi and more, that's his channel name. He also made an image for the Raspberry Pi that is more like a Mac OS style or the big slur style. It's actually really pretty. So if you want to check out his channel as well. And also he does a lot of other reviews on the software that we've done before, like Box86, Pi Kiss, and stuff like that on the Raspberry Pi. So be sure to check that out. And I'll, again, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Before we jump into the setup and everything, I'm going to show you what I got going on. This way, if you guys are interested, you could just follow along. To start off, we have Ubuntu stock 2004 ARC64. So it's a 64-bit and also 64-bit user land, as well as the GNOME desktop and i'm actually keeping the gnome default desktop theme as well the euro theme now if you actually have a good wallpaper like something like this that will complement the actual theme the theme looks really good so i haven't had to change anything as far as the theming goes now i did add dash to panel on the bottom and i also added this uh wobbly window so to go down the settings a little bit um, first thing I did was actually change the transparency on the menu bar itself. So if I did have something else like a file manager and you go down, it'll actually darken up. So that works pretty well. As well as add um, CPU frequency controller. Now I overclocked the CPU to two gigahertz and I actually changed the minimum clock to 800. Now if I leave it at 600, it's fine, it still works, but you will notice a little bit lag when program starts up. So leaving it around like 800 megahertz actually works out very well. If you wanted to, and this is plugged into the wall, I, I could actually leave it at one gigahertz and I'll be happy with it too. But 800 megahertz seems to be working pretty good. Uh, I don't have any uh, lag that you would normally expect on a Raspberry Pi because the minimum clock is that much higher. So it works out pretty well. Uh, Flameshot is a screenshotting program that I use. So I just kept it down here. Then I have my normal task on the right side, you know, like uh, settings, power on, power off, stuff like that. Now, one of the things I did do, and it's very important, as especially for a desktop setup, any operating system can be great depending on the software that's backing them up. Same thing with like consoles and everything. So imagine this, if you have PlayStation and PlayStation actually never came out with the games, nobody would buy a PlayStation. Same thing with Android or Apple. You know, if there was no software center to back them up, it's not going to be that great. So what I ended up doing was installing GNOME Software Center. And in GNOME Software Center, I also added Snap and also Flatpak. That way I could get as much software as I can or need it. So if I was to search anything like um, VLC Media Player, right? And if I go over here, you can actually choose between do you want to install it from Ubuntu or Flathub, you know, stuff like that. And if it was on Snap, it would say Snap on there as well. So having multiple sources for software gives me more benefit uh, as to what software I want to install. So moving on, uh, again, we will be installing this as well. Moving on, I'm going to show you my applications and I kept it as the stock GNOME applications, but I did remove the frequently used apps. So uh, yeah, they're going to remove it on 3.38 anyway. So I just did it ahead of the time. So I'm a little ahead of the game. Anyway, in this software center here, uh, I know, let me go down my list. Uh, Inbox, supposedly it works. I couldn't get it to work, but you should be able to get some sort of Android applications working on the Raspberry Pi like this. I couldn't get it to work, but that I, it was something that I tried to attempt. Astro Menace is a little tiny game that I like to play. It's a OpenGL, so it works pretty well on this guy if you've lowered the settings a bit. Uh, Fast and Light is another Steam game that I installed. Uh, Code OSS, which is VS Code. Uh, it's open source version of VS Code. So um, this and this works really well. And especially on the Raspberry Pi, it's actually made by uh, Head Melted. So I'll leave a link down in the description for that. Oh, also everything we do in the setup, I actually have a GitHub repository that actually leads to all this. Moving on, uh, the un another application was uh, Flameshot. Yeah, I spoke about that earlier. Karita, which is a drawing application that you could use similar to Photoshop, but it's light enough to actually run on the Raspberry Pi. So if you really needed to get into editing some graphics or stuff like that, you could use Karita. Uh, moving on, we have uh, LibreOffice, which is default with GNOME. I just left the default installation. Olive is a video editor, a non-linear video editor if you guys are interested in editing videos. Uh, this thing works pretty well. It crashes sometimes depending on the video files that I've been trying to put in but it's uh yeah you could just 
create a new timeline or a new sequence and then just start dropping uh, projects in here, videos and cutting them up and stuff like that. Works pretty well. It's a much more lightweight than KDE. Next up, we have the software updaters, uh, GNOME Software Center. Obviously, we I have Steam installed. So that means I have Box86 installed, and that works pretty well as well. Another thing that I add into Raspberry Pi and most of my Raspberry Pi or most of my Linux installations are Synaptic Package Manager. This helps me handle all the dev files instead of having to use because the GNOME Software Center allows you to install software, but it doesn't tell you what's the backend stuff. Like Box86, you wouldn't find it on GNOME Software Center, but in Synaptic, you would find it here. And you, if you want to uninstall it, it'll uninstall all the other libraries along with it. So uh, let me see if I could show you Firebird. Do I even have Firebird installed? Oh, it's not Firebird, Thunderbird. Thunderbird. And if I go down Thunderbird and I click over here and say I wanted to uh, mark for removal or complete removal, right? It'll actually tell me what third-party software it has installed, which is Thunderbird GNOME support. And it'll uh, remove that as well. So it's much easier if you want to install programs and other programs that correlate with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or other packages that it requires. It'll remove everything altogether. Last but not least, I have a VLC media player because I don't like the regular video player. It doesn't have much support for files. VLC just supports everything, so I might as well just install VLC. And that's about it. Um, other than that, uh, settings I have not changed other than adding the wobbly windows. I kept the default desktop theme. I added the CPU frequency. And here's a huge thing. Like I was saying before, I keep the minimum frequency 800 megahertz, so it's more responsive, but you could always like clock it the way you want to. And this is a very good uh, CPU manager and it actually works really well on the Raspberry Pi. One thing you might have not noticed is that I don't have Zoom on here, which I do have Zoom. Uh, we actually had to go back into the code and modify it a little bit more. So it works on ARM64. I ended up going, talking to the developer again on Box86 and we managed to get it to work perfectly. But I would leave, instead of having to actually make a shortcut, which is another thing I added, uh, menu, where is it? Menu editor. This is the most important thing because in Raspberry Pi, you have so many weird software that you need to run in a certain command. Keeping a menu editor is perfect so you can modify whatever you want. For Zoom, it works right away. Uh, Box86 incorporates it itself into the system. So anytime it reads a x86 application, you don't have to run Box86 in front of it. It will just automatically know and it'll take over it. But I do have the latest version of Box86 on my Discord. So if you want to grab that, it has all the fixes for the 64-bit. And uh, yeah, there we have it. it. It just works. I'm not going to test it, but just keep in mind it does work. Now, here's the downside to it. It doesn't close gracefully. I do have a little bit of issue. If you leave it up like this for a little bit and you close it over here, give it like about two minutes. They'll say, do you want to force close? Or I could just control C and pop out of that. That's how come I didn't make a start menu group for it because it has that little bit of an issue. They do know it'll probably eventually get resolved, but for the meantime, I'm fine with that. All right, so now that I show you how the desktop looks like, if you guys are still interested, I'm gonna jump into setting this whole thing up. Sorry guys, I had to end this a little abrupt. I know I said I was gonna go into the setup right now, but I ended up having a really hard time trying to film this whole piece. Everything that could go wrong kind of went wrong where I was filming something and my capture card decided not to write on the SD card because the SD card went bad. And then finally when I got up and going again, the SSD that I was using for the Raspberry Pi decided to go. And I knew that that was going to go soon because it's a really old 120 gigabyte drive that I had and it was about time. But yeah, I didn't want to believe it. And that went bad and I had to go back to refilm it a couple of times. So I have a lot of footage. Everything's already finished. But for me to go through it will take me a couple more hours. So instead of having to, to rush the setup part, I decided to make it a part two instead. This way it gives me a little bit more time to push this video out. So I'll get that video out in a couple of days. So I will leave a link down in the description when that video is up. Also as the first comment, I'll just pin that. And yeah, you'll be seeing that in a couple of days after this video. So uh, thank you for your patience. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.